All right, everybody, here's another one. Uh, this video is going to cover chapter 6.7 from our textbook that is geometric series. And just like before, uh, please recognize that this is a series, not a sequence. Uh, what does that mean? Uh, before you attempt any question that is received, let's say uh, that you read on a problem set or a, a test, quiz, whatever, you really need to make sure that you've identified that it is a series not a sequence because it will change how you might want to approach that question. Okay, uh, but set of paper and pencil, uh, I am going to go through a bunch of examples in hopes that it is really going to stick with you. And please note, I'm gonna talk a little bit uh, this time around, a little bit more than usual because geometric series is in my opinion, one of the most important topics. Um, the one of the most important topics that is applicable to just about any person in the world. Uh, let me rephrase that. A geometric series is what all the other parts of chapter six has been aiming towards. Okay. It, it is the every single thing we've done so far sort of brings us to six points. It sort of sets us up to understand 6.7 better. Geometric series is by far the most important math um, for everyone, not uh, for everyone who like math, who likes math, but also everyone who doesn't like math. It doesn't matter whether you're good at math or you're bad at math. Geometric series is something you're going to need. Why? The geometric series formula that I'm going to introduce for you today is essentially the, um, I guess, the forefather or the foundation in which all things money is built upon. Now, I'm not just talking about, hey, I work a couple of hours, I get paid a couple of hours, okay? I'm talking about money making money for you. I'm talking about the Wall Street. I'm talking about um, investments. I'm talking about interest. I'm talking about how to make sure that you are getting more than what your hourly wage is worth. Because it's just, I can go on and on and on about it. I think I've, I've made videos uh, last year for my uh, MCF3M classes just because I thought this was probably the one thing. If there's one thing that you're gonna take from my class uh, before you stop math altogether for the rest of your life, try to absorb geometric series and pay special attention to what we cover for financial math in the next chapter. Okay, you have been warned. Show this to your friends. I, I don't know, or just tell your parents about it, whatever. It's super important, okay? So um, we are going to start this video with the formula. I'm gonna give you the formula for geometric series. I'm going to give you the proof of how the formula has come about, or you can, of course, uh, skip to examples check the timestamp, okay, uh, in the description section below. And then from there, I am going to do example questions. Okay, so again, number two, if you really want to, you can skip it. But I really think it's valuable for you to at least know where it sort of comes from. Uh, there it is. Okay, but I do think it's worthwhile. So after I give you the formula and do my little spiel, um, try to suffer through it, okay? So um, let's see, where shall we begin? Okay, recall, okay? Here it is. So if you wanna start writing this down, recall in a geometric sequence, Let's do a simple one. Uh, we wrote, let's say, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, and so on and so forth. Um, what is the geometric sequence? Well, you said that whatever the term number is, most likely you would have written it's 2, because that's a starting, material, uh, starting number. And the, the common ratio as we move along this sequence is a factor of two. So it's gonna look like that, all right? Um, a series, just like arithmetic series, it's taking a geometric sequence 
and adding every single term in that sequence along the way. All right. Um, yeah. Just make sure that you recognize that the numbers are not a difference, but our ratio. All right. The formula, the formula for geometric series is the sum of a certain number of terms is equal to a multiplied by the ratio, the common ratio to the power of n subtracted by a one. Notice it's not n minus one, okay? It's just n. The exponent is n. All this entire exponent is subtracted by a single one. All of this is divided by the common ratio subtracted by one, okay? This is it. If you want to use a timestamp and just skip to the example from here, you may do so. If you are interested in knowing where the heck this formula came from because WTF, um, what? It's completely different from anything else you've done so far. It looks so different. It looks complex. It might be a little daunting and really turn offish to you. Here's the proof. And it's actually quite brilliant. Before I forget, please take note, um, page 408, that is going to be your homework. And lo and behold, we're actually done chapter six. So take a look at those review questions afterwards as well. All right. Oops. All right, here we go. Here's the proof. Let me draw a little line so that you don't have to. All right. Um, if I were to expand the C a, a geometric series, it would look something like this. The sum of whatever term, sorry, let me do it here. Um, the sum of, so notice how I'm leaving a little bit of space, okay? Please leave some space. The sum of whatever number of terms is equal to the first term plus the second term, which is going to be multiplied by the ratio, plus the third term, which is going to be multiplied by another ratio, plus the fourth term, which is going to be multiplied by another ratio, all the way up to what? A R N minus two plus A R N minus one. If you remember, right, if you remember, oops, in a geometric sequence, the term number or the final term is going to always be that. So it makes sense that the last term is going to be a r n minus one, the second last is n minus two, and every single one of these, this is term number four because the exponent is a three, that is term number three because the exponent is a two. You get the point. I'm actually going to get this out of there. All right. Um, here's the proof. Right above it, I'm actually going to rewrite this. But this entire sum, whatever it is, I'm going to actually multiply it by r. If I multiply this entire sum by r, what does that make all the other ones? This would be a multiplied by r plus a r, which is multiplied by r again and then again, and then again, all the way up to Sorry, I'm really not trying to make this video any longer than it is. Only up to what? A r is supposed to be n minus 2, but I multiplied by another r, so it's n minus r. And then a r, n minus 1 multiplied by another r is just n. OK? Um, rewind it if you want to try it yourself. But remember, uh, it's just strictly algebra. If I multiply the left side of an equal sign by a number, I have to multiply everything on the other side of the equal sign by a number. OK? So that's all it is. From here, I'm going to do a very quick substitution elimination technique, okay, rather the elimination technique. I am going to subtract the top number with the bottom number, or rather the top equation with the bottom equation. What does that mean? R times Sn 
minus Sn is equal to AR plus AR squared plus AR cubed, blah, 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 uh, subtracted by A plus AR, so on and so forth. So it gets a little complex, but consider what I'm doing here. I'm going to color code this. What is AR subtracted by AR? Zero. I don't have to worry about it. It's basically done. What is AR squared subtracted by the AR squared underneath? It's going to be zero. What about AR cubed subtracted by the AR cubed underneath? It's going to be zero. I think you get the point. Long story short, every single term above and below are going to subtract each other, and then that and that and this and this, except what two numbers? A r to the power of n and just a survive. So it's going to be, remember, the top equation subtracted by the bottom equation. In other words, a r to the power of n is subtracted by a. I'm almost there. This is going to slowly turn into that. Stay tuned. Okay, here we go. Now, I am going to simplify this, well, not simplify, I am going to common factor both sides because it's going to help me organize my thoughts a little bit. What's common between the two terms on the left side? The sum, I don't know what number this is, Sn and Sn, but I do know that they're common. So if I factor out Sn, what's left? R minus one. And on the right side, if I common factor out the A, I have Rn minus 1. You see where I'm getting at? R minus 1 is a single number. It's a term. So if I want Sn all alone, I'm going to divide both sides by R minus 1. Oh, I always misclick. R minus 1. There's my equation. Uh, just as a reminder, this would be the total sum of the series of n terms. I don't know how much how much that is. It could be 100 terms. It could be 1,000 terms. It could be two terms, whatever n is. Okay. The a value is, as usual, the first term. So that's T1, okay. R is going to be the common ratio. And the N, as I mentioned before, is the number of terms in the equation or in the series, sorry. All right. Um, yeah, so why am I, so this is the proof, and why am I stressing so much, um, again, if you are sort of savvy enough with your numbers, you might already see where this might be coming from. Consider this sum, so just not the, not the top part, just don't worry about this part, okay? But consider Sn on its own. A is being added to, so a certain number is being added to a number that's multiplied and grown. And it's gonna be added to the same number that's gonna be grown twice. It's gonna be added to another number that's grown three times so on and so forth. How is that sort of familiar? Let's pretend, you know, you're as, you, as soon as you turn 18, you're a quote unquote adult now, you decide to save, you know, 50 bucks, and 50 bucks decides to grow over, let's say, 10 years. It's gonna get big money, right? But let's say when you're 19, you let another amount of A and let it grow for nine years. Let's say when you're 20 years old, you put another sum in and you let it grow for eight years, seven years, six years, five years. Maybe you see it, maybe you don't. I'm just getting excited, so I wanted to sh shed some light into the future. If you have no idea what the heck I'm saying, don't worry about it. It's gonna come. Anyways, here is our formula. All right? Copy that down. Uh, pause the video. 
do what you need to because I'm going to clear the screen and give you some example questions in three, two, one, clear. Here we go. Example question, the first one I'm going to do comes from uh, page, let's see, comes from page 404, example two. It's basically from the textbook. And it says this, determine the sum of the first 10 terms for the geometric series. Ready? Part A. F of one is equal to 20 and R is negative three. Please note, this is just a function notation for uh, a sequence or a series, whatever the case may be. F of one simply means the first term when the n value is equal to one. That's another way of saying T1 is equal to 20. That's another way of saying A is equal to 20. So we have A, they give us R for a geometric series. I am asking, they are asking for the sum of 10 terms. So let's plug it into the formula. Sn is equal to a rn minus 1 over r minus 1, which is equal to 20. Negative 3 to the power of 10 minus 1 divided by negative 3 minus 1. Whew. I am going to need a calculator for this. Negative 3 to the power of 10. Uh, let's see, negative 3 to the power of 10. Please make sure you put negative 3 in a bracket before you place the exponent in there. I predict a lot of people are going to make careless calculator mistakes. Please be careful. This is going to equal negative 2,900. 295,000, 240. That's it. If I were to let this go for 10 terms and keep on adding it with the ratio of negative three, that's what's gonna add up to. Okay. If I were to write this out, it'd be a little bit annoying, but uh, consider how this might look and just be surprised. Uh, the number here may not seem very obvious to a series if I were to write it out. The first term is 20. The second term will be negative 60. And the third term would be positive 180. The next term would be negative 540. Do you see how large these numbers are getting from every single term? Multiply by three, that becomes positive 1620, right? It becomes in the thousands now, and it's added to, subtracted by three, four, eight, six, zero, huge. And by the time I get to one, two, three, four, five, six, the seventh term, I'm already in the fifth digits. Okay? So it doesn't seem that obvious. So even if your answer might not seem right, think about it carefully. And if you need to, just write it out. And you might be very surprised as to how large some of these numbers get, especially if the common ratio is large. This is actually quite large. All right, here we go. Shall we try a more, more difficult question? Let's try some other examples to better our confidence and exposure. Uh, the next example, let's do it from the same section, page 405, example three. Determine the sum of each geometric series. Ah, I like this one. 32 plus 16 plus 8 plus. They give you the first term. That's nice. Um, they don't tell you how many terms there actually are. But you can calculate the ratio. And just to confirm, yes, ratio is going to be 1 over 2. Um, so, how do we do it? If you recall, our equation requires us to have the value of n if you want to solve it. So that's your goal. 
we don't have it right now, but please go back to your understanding of geometric sequence. You're going to need it. What was the formula for geometric sequence? A times R to the power of N minus one. I don't know what TN is, but I do know the that I don't know what, sorry. I don't know what N is, but I do know the value of TN is one over eight. Cause that's my last term. Okay, that's my last term. From there, I do know the first number is 32. I do know my common ratio is one over two, and I have n minus one. Let's do some algebra. To get this term all alone, I am going to divide both sides by 32. So one over eight divided by 32, that's the same as one over 256. Okay. So uh, seeing as how both of them are uh, fractions with a numerator is one, I can, I can basically say that uh, 256 is two to the power of n minus one. If you don't like that, um, fine. How's this? One to the power of two to what exponent is going to be the same? Okay, that's, that's essentially what we're going to do. One to the one over two to the power of, let's see, so we're going to the five ten. One over two to the power of eight is the same as one over 256, which means eight is equal to n minus one. That means n is equal to nine. Uh, again, this part, just like my previous video for geometric sequences, uh, the best way to find exponents is to use logarithms, but assuming that you do not know it, you're gonna have to do a little bit of guess and check or use a little bit of your number sense to know that two to the power of eight is 256. There it is. One last example. Uh, this question is a word question straight from the textbook. It is example four on page 450, uh, 406. Let's see, I'm just messing myself up and touching weird buttons. Okay, page 406, example four. A tennis tournament has 128 entrants a player is dropped from the competition after losing one match. Winning players go on to the other to another match. What is the total number of matches that will be played in this tournament? Okay, um, use a little bit of common sense, people. If I have 128 participants, how many matches can I make? Obviously, the first match is going to be 64. Can you play a game with just one person? That makes no sense. Assuming it's a one versus one match. The first number of, uh, the, in the first round, there's going to be 64 matches. And in those matches, of course, half the people go on to the next round, the other half lose, which means the next round, there's going to be 32 matches, and then 16, and then eight, and then four, and then two, and then there's the finals. I think you could probably figure it out. So this is my sequence. What is the total number of matches? That means I'm looking for the sum, which is 64 plus 32 plus 16 plus 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1. Now, I know you can plug this into the calculator, but I'm going to pretend that the question is so hard that, and there are so many numbers that you can't do it manually. I'm going to ask you or force you to use the equation. All right, uh, here we go. Uh, let's see, uh, if the A value is a 64, and of course the ratio is going to be a division of two or one over two, uh, I am also looking for the number of N, which I don't know, but I do know at the very last stage, there's only going to be one round, the finals. 
So Tn, whatever that might be, is going to be equal to ARn minus 1. I also know that Tn's value is going to be 1 because there can only be 1 at the end of the tournament. The first number is 64. The common ratio is half, n minus 1. Divide both sides by 64. I have 64 equals 1 over 2, n minus 1. I also know that 64 is equal to 1 over 2 to the power of 6. Just in case I'm wrong. Yep, 6. That means 6 equals n minus 1, so n must be 7. What is the total number? What is S7? That would be, according to the formula, 64 ratio, 7 minus 1, bracket, half minus 1. See if you can plug that into the calculator without making a mistake or making any bed mass errors. S7 is going to be 127 matches. That's it. The equation will take you far, but it's only going to uh, help you uh, as much as you practice. Okay? You will only get out of this as much as you put in, so practice, please. The homework, please uh, scroll back to the beginning of the video to see what the homework is. Please send me questions if you are not quite sure. If I think it's going to help the class, I will make a video response to it. Do your very best. Hope you are still healthy and you are still motivated to continue. Uh, take care. Uh, stay safe. And again, hope to see you soon. Bye.